Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's video, we're going to be unboxing a brand new Stanley Bailey number four. Hope you enjoy. So I decided to uh, buy one of these from our Bunnings store, which is our big box store. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive and um, I thought I'd just do an unboxing because there's not many out there. So those of you that are interested in getting one, you can see what you get inside the box. So to start with, you can see that it's in fairly decent box it'll protect the the hand plane pretty well and they've just got a few listings on the back here of other products in their range and you can see we've got showing the number three here number five and number four so they're the bent planes that they actually have in this list so let's go ahead and open it so we've just got these little pull tabs here open it on the top and We'll just pull this out. So, what we've got in here was just a little bit of packer in there to stop the hand plane moving around. We have a little Stanley booklet here that, or pamphlet. Let's just quickly open this and have a look at it. This is just talking about their entire range of tools, the blades, and how some of their different tools operate. And then we've got this one here, which is talking about the bench planes here and all the different parts and the numbers of the different parts if you had to get replacements. So we'll just put that to the side. So what you're all here to see is obviously the hand plane. So they've got it wrapped in this sort of wax grease proof paper to prevent the plane from getting uh, rusty so out of the box you can see that the hand plane looks fairly nice uh, we have plastic handles we do have a chrome plating on the uh, lever cap here and it feels like there's some sort of a coating on the sides of the beds here just to prevent them from rusting which will be some sort of a film finish. Looking here, we can see the casting is quite rough on the bed here. Everything's painted here, obviously. It's not a Japaning that I can tell. It feels like a paint to me. Front knob is a little loose, so we'll have to tighten that screw up. The back tote doesn't move at all, which is, that's awesome. Uh, we've got a fairly large mouth here, which is what you expect with a lot of these cheaper planes. What I think I might do here is we'll we'll uh, we'll take this apart We'll um, inspect the back of the blade, the chip breaker, lever cap. We'll take the tote and handle off and we'll inspect the casting of the bed. And uh, so you can have a really good idea of what the finish and fit of this type of plane is. So we'll go ahead, we'll take this lever cap off. That's very, very tight. And as is normal when they ship, this little uh, screw here is done up tighter to stop everything from moving. So. To get this off to start with, I just need to loosen the screw off a touch. So, obviously on this lever cap, we have the kidney style here. The uh, little lever up here, the casting's not 100% perfect, so it's a little bit tight, but I think a little bit of oil in there will sort that out. But you can see it's chrome-plated, got the Stanley colour in behind the, the lettering there. And on the whole, the lever cap's not too bad and there's not too much fine work that needs to go into something like a lever cap it's just performing a function of holding the blade and it's doing it it's doing that fine on this one uh we've got the screw here which again that's the lever cap screw uh that looks like it's chromed as well uh nothing to really talk about there uh we look at the blade and chip breaker we can see there's uh, some sort of a coating on the the chip breaker here to stop it rusting, uh, sort of like a maybe a shellac or something like that on there, some film finish, and we can see the blade has that same that same coating on it as well. Uh, so let's just go over here. We'll undo the screw. Actually, before we do that, we'll uh, just see the mating of the chip breaker to the blade. So if you haven't seen my videos where I've checked for the scap before and that I use the light to do it, I'll leave a link to that down below so you guys can check that out. But essentially you're looking up through this gap and if you can see any light along this front edge, you know that either the edge of the chip breaker is not flat or the back of the blade is not flat. Now, 
it's going to be hard for me to show you this on video, but in this case, there is actually quite a big gap, so that would be something that would have to be fixed. So considering the price point, it's not surprising that uh, quite a bit of work is going to be required to get this into a state where you could use it as a, a daily user. Since we're working on this, I'll just take the screw out of the back here and we can just see the fit and feel. Um, fit and feel is a little rough of the screw, but it's just another chrome screw. There's no big issues there. And then if we just look in here, obviously we have the little Stanley marking on the top of the blade here. We've got the more, uh, the, the later punched blade and uh, you can see the inside of the chip breaker here really has quite a heavy coating on it because obviously while this was in storage for I don't know how many years they didn't want rust forming on this so instead of oiling everything up and putting it in a bag as a lot of the newer makers do they just put film coatings on everything and put it inside a, a bit of a wax paper. So if we look at this blade here you can see how heavy pitting this machining is here so we know that this has just come straight off whatever grinding machine they had and it, it won't be sharp. It, uh, it barely takes a little mark off my nail, which means that this is not going to take any, uh, any shavings particularly well. If we take a little bit of paper, like this thin waxed paper here, that just shows that it's, it's not sharp at all, it's just tearing the paper. So now we'll move on to the frog, we'll remove that. So just undo these screws here, which are actually done up fairly tight as well. Probably tighter than you needed to do them up. So we've got little tiny screws here. These screws are a little bit finer than I've seen on some, some planes. So a lot of my vintage ones have screws that are about twice the size, but it's, it's still doing the job and it just means these holes in here are a little bit smaller than I would expect. Looking at the frog, uh, I have seen rougher machining than this. This is fairly smooth. If I put a straight edge up against that, I don't know if you can see, but there's quite a big gap between that top corner and the bottom of at least probably two millimeters. So that, that's quite a big gap between the top and the bottom on that side. And on this side, we probably have about a millimeter gap on the other side. So that's something that would have to be corrected before you're gonna get good performance out of this hand plane. We have the brass adjuster knob on the back as usual, which uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Pretty standard that a lot of them have had for, for a long time. And we can see the fit and finish is not great. It's not being polished up like you would expect on a premium plane, but that's something that's easily fixed. Moving on. Back to the frog again, we obviously have the thread in the back that the adjuster screw goes on. We have the yoke and we have this little attachment that allows us to move the frog back and forwards on the plane body. And then on the bottom here, we can see we've got the machining on the bottom of the frog. And again, it's not very even or equal. It is smooth right down on the bottom here, which is better than I've seen on some, but we do have rough uh, machining up here and you might want to smooth that out to get good performance in connection with the body of the plane. Then with the yoke here, we've got a lot of slop in the yoke which you don't get with the premium planes. In the end of the day I don't think it affects things too much and you could put some sort of spaces in there to stop this rocking around as much. Then we've obviously got this lateral adjuster now. These are usually a little bit tight when you first get them and a little bit of a bend back and forwards kind of loosens them up and then get a little bit of oil in there which which will help that but the lateral adjuster it obviously doesn't have a ball bearing down here it's just a piece of metal that pushes the blade side to side which i've seen on a lot of planes and I, i've had no problems with every any plane that's had that but you know if you wanted the ball bearing there um this is not a plane for you but at the price point, that's what you expect. It's just a bent piece, folded over, uh, no, no lettering on here, and it's just a cone piece of flat steel. So now we'll move on to the handles. Now obviously this front one was loose, so if we tighten that up, see that actually holds quite tight. It doesn't move. The back tote doesn't move at all. So if you're looking for some nice solid handles that don't move around, there's nothing wrong with these handles other than being plastic. 
and while I don't like plastic handles for such a cheap plane, uh, that's what you get, you get plastic handles. There's nothing wrong with those handles, so let's go ahead and we'll look at the screws. So we've got the same styling that you expect on all of these. The rod with the standard screw that just screws on top of it like this. This one does, however, have a little washer that fits in there to make sure that it pulls down tight on the plastic handle. Just something you don't see in a lot of planes, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's the exact same size and it does the job that it's meant to. So uh, this locks on with a, there's a little knob just here, little raised bit just here. And obviously the angled screw thread that runs through, which is the standard that you get. There's nothing wrong with that. And that little knob pushes in on this plastic quite tightly and actually stops the handle from racking side to side. So, um, although I don't like the plastic handles, uh, these handles work very well on this plane. Uh, we can see straight off that the machining on the back here is not a, not a very good machining, but I think it'll probably still do the job. You can see that uh, they've just put a flat chamfer here, which is a bit easier to do instead of doing the normal rounded that you'd see on a lot of planes. So you can see on this one here that it's sort of flat all around. It doesn't have a big heavy chamfer on these edges in here. Uh, there's little bits of paint missing in a few spots, which is not great. And that could come down to either the attention to detail when it was done or um, the packaging of the, the plane. Um, we look down in here and we see these reference areas for the frog are very, very tiny. If I go back to one of the other planes again, you'll see that usually these entire pieces here are metal, no paint down here, and all of these spots are like a continuous piece, but they've just got little tiny reference spots here. And that might not be a bad thing because the machining's not so great on the frog, that might allow you to actually get a better reference on a few spots. To me, they look like they've they're pretty good, so I don't think too much work would be required there. We have that same heavier chamfer in here on the towards the toe here on these edges, uh, which is probably just a little bit easier to do and a bit quicker to do with a machine that's not as accurate as some of the premium makers use. There's a coating on the two sides, but not on the bottom for some reason. Uh, we can see it's not a very smooth uh, machining. It's quite rough to the touch, and you're probably want to lap that out to ensure that everything's flat. As usual, you've got your sharp edges. It's not finished particularly well along on the back, but a quick use of a file would uh, sort all that out. For the most part, I don't think it's too bad. Now what I want to do is just put a straight edge to the sole to see how flat it is. I know it's going to be pretty tricky to actually see whether there's a gap there. I tried to give you that close up, but what I can see from eye here is that it's not out too much at most maybe half a millimeter, which you could easily remove. And I've seen much worse vintage planes uh, over time where the soles have moved worse than that. So I don't think flattening this is gonna to be too bad. If we bring a square up to the sides, they are about standard for what a, a lot of vintage planes have and they don't have the same sort of squareness as a lot of the modern planes. They're relatively square. This one was out by about maybe a quarter of a millimeter right down at the base to the top. This side is bowed here, so it's not flat, but it's flat here and flat there. So there you have it, folks. That's my unboxing of our brand new Stanley Bailey number no. four. Obviously there's uh, quite a few things that uh, are not great. There's some things that work pretty well on it, and for the price point, you can correct a lot of issues that you're gonna get because you're not gonna get very good machining or fine machining with something for the price of one of these from a big box store. And if you, obviously, if you're prepared to buy the premium planes for the premium cost, well, that's up to you. But I wanted to review this one or just do an unboxing of this one for those of you out there that are struggling to find vintage hand planes that can do the job. And I know a lot of people tell you to avoid these big box store planes because they're not well made. And that's true, but if you're struggling to find one, you can definitely grab one of these planes and set it up and use it as your first hand plane while you continue to look for some more vintage planes that might be of better quality. But you will be able to get your work done using one of these. 
So if you like this video, you'd like to see some other videos that I've done where I've restored some vintage hand planes with some of the techniques I'm going to use in an upcoming video to help correct some of the issues with this hand plane, please check out that playlist down here. And I'd like to put a big thank you out there to my patrons on Patreon, because without your support, I'm not sure I'd be able to keep making these videos. And if any of you out there would like to support me to help me keep making these videos as I'm such a small channel, please check out my Patreon. Uh, links in the description below. Bye for now.